Well, home is where the heart is for Katherine Heigl and her singer-songwriter hubby Josh Kelly. They're raising their kids away from the Hollywood spotlight on a family farm in Utah. And Lauren Zima got an exclusive tour. I'm busy making memories. Give me some numbers. How many horses do you guys keep? Uh, I think we have like 12 horses. Okay. Uh, 12 chickens. Gotcha. Nursery rhyme. <laughs> and we have two pigs and two goats. I want to see the farm. It is raining. Yeah. Is this... You've given me this. Is this a farm <laughs> umbrella? This is the only thing I could find that was going to work to uh, shield us from the rain. OK, so chicken coop. Yeah, chicken coop right over here. <laughs> OK, oh, hi. <laughs> Josh, what are they wanting from me that I'm not, I don't have for them? They Food. want hay. Right. Hey. Some country it. singers are faking it. We're legit down here. <laughs> Yeah, Josh, Catherine, and their three kids are pretty much living off the grid on their ranch. You know, we're, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we just sort of stay to ourselves unless I go on tour, unless my wife goes and makes a movie or a TV show. We were already living a very quarantined life anyway. On the property, there's also Josh's studio, a bar, and this riding arena where nine-year-old Adelaide gets practice in the saddle. Can you tell us this horse's name? Jasmine. Everyone loves it. she'll sit next to me and I'm like, what do you think of that mix? And she goes, sounds a little bass heavy to me. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> Farm fella who can sing, two thumbs up. Now, you on the real. So <laughs> what makes your relationship so special? Um, you know, we just really balance each other. And I really do believe in this statement, you know, when they say, when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you hear that? <laughs> Lori Harvey says Michael B. Jordan is in game, y'all. So you know what we had to do? Yes. We had to go talk to her daddy. I <laughs> spoke exclusively to Steve Harvey, who told me Michael is already family. Mm -hmm. I bumped into somebody you know oh so well, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> he is genuinely who he looks like he is. It threw me off at first because he was so kind. I figured, <laughs> okay, this is the game, right? Right. But it wasn't, man. This dude was sincere. They're doing well. I'm in love with Lloyd to death, yeah. to the moon and back. I'll hurt you about him. I really will. And you can <laughs> ask him. Steve, now, hold on. I want to ask you, has he commented on your fashions? Not that I know of. Michael B. Jordan knows better than to challenge the king of the three-piece suit, but Steve's switching up his style and adding more vibrant colors this season. Steve on Watch is back with an in-studio audience on Facebook Watch, and he gave us an exclusive look inside his wardrobe. Well, let's go to, Let's go to the rack. That suit pops right there. This is called, it's called Popalicious. <laughs> yeah! Eli Karamu, he is my stylist. Describe it. Tell okay. what it is. Every piece from Dolce that we wear is one of one. Uh, this is Fendi by Kim Jones. We make the time, the exact fabric and color of the shirt. These shoes right here. Mm -hmm. These Let's are see. Christian Dior high tops. Now, look, Steve, we didn't wear those kind of shoes no. growing up. <laughs> but he wears them with suits. And the biggest fight we had was, I don't want to wear a high top sneaker with a suit but I wore an Armani sneaker that don't look like a sneaker. Tell us how every man can add a little style like Steve has. My trick, honestly, is to simplify uh, formality. This is Tom Ford. It's a vibrant, vibrant piece. Hey, that's a lot. Kevin, this is not for you. It could be <laughs> for you, Kevin. No, you won't. You'll lose your job at ET if you wear this. You know what? Steve Harvey is becoming a style icon and I kind of like it. All right, now to comedy legend, Mr. Bob Newhart. You know, Bob is still cracking us up after more than six decades in the biz, and only one show is at home with the ever humble comedian. It's the man, the myth, the comedy icon, the one and only Bob Newhart. The E.T. exclusive. First of all, how are you feeling? I feel great. I just turned 92. It's been a great life. It's just, you know, making people laugh is, it's wonderful. I love you, America. And America loves you right back, Bob. I mean, what an honor it was spending the day with this legend at his Los Angeles home. He's celebrating 62 years in show business. Hello. For me, Bob Newhart's show was like, it was appointment viewing. Well, we were at CBS Saturday Night Lineup, all in the family, MASH, Mary Tyler Moore, us, and Carol Burnett. And, and we used to get, like, Super Bowl numbers. Bob shot his show on the CBS Radford lot, which is also where we shoot E.T. That has such great memories. I spent 14 years there, and 
Mary Tyler Moore was our Seinfeld with her. But Bob had a little known secret. I had the lines on the back of a cereal box. The director, he said, cut, 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 cut. He said, Bob, nobody turns the cereal box around. I said, OK, you're right, you're right. But that's where the words were. There are some real top, I mean, I see Richard Pryor, Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, Johnny Carson, Dean Martin. Bob's home is filled with memories with his fellow comedians, awards, magazine covers, even all the scripts from the Bob Newhart Show and Newhart. One of his most treasured pieces of memorabilia is this letter from JFK, signed just five months before his assassination. It was the president's birthday, and I entertained at it and received a letter from President Kennedy that said enjoyed it greatly. That's amazing. I want to play an interview we did with you in 1986. I mean, I belong on television. I, I don't really belong in movies. I tried movies, and, and they didn't work. Movies did work for you. Well, Elf, Elf worked. I'll always be here for you. What was it like making Elf? It was a joy. All right, let's talk about Big Bang Theory. Is he dangerous? <laughs> How much fun was that? It was great. I like Big Bang. I like the writing on it. I, I think the cast is incredible. Any chance that you could pop up on Young Sheldon? I hate to say no. <laughs> you never say no. Although Bob has won an Emmy for acting, his first love was stand-up comedy. Now Bob is showcasing some of his classic comedy routines in the vinyl re-release of his 1992 TV special, Off the Record, which is on sale now. How fast were you, were you going when, when Mr. Adams jumped from the car? <laughs> some of the early routines, I like to do them again. But the most important thing in Bob's life, his wife, Ginny, their four kids and 10 grandkids. In a crazy business, in a crazy town, you've been married for 58 years. 58, yeah. Comedians' marriages tend to laugh. There's something about laughter and the length of a marriage. She knows me. She cuts right to, to the bone, and uh, she's been right time and time again. Oh, she, God, if she sees this. <laughs> oh.